topic of my presentation is volatile organic compounds in ambient air their sampling and analytical techniques it is a well known fact that expansion of existing industries development of new technologies and products and increasing use of vehicles coupled with population growth especially in large urban areas are introducing a great number and quantity of pollutants into the air ambient air pollution causes due to the introduction of particulates chemicals other toxic gases fumes or smoke or odor in the outdoor atmosphere at the levels that pose a threat to humans animals plants or property there are mainly anthropogenic as well as natural sources which are responsible for air pollution and be and can be categorized as primary pollutants when they are directly emitted from the sources and secondary pollutants which form products upon reaction in the atmosphere suspended particulate matter and gaseous pollutants released from various sources contain organic pollutants they are released into the atmosphere due to incomplete combustion of fossil fuel by the process of pyrolysis or pyrosynthesis organic pollutants include saturated hydrocarbons unsaturated hydrocarbons aromatic hydrocarbons then nitrogen containing compounds like amines amides and oxygenated compounds like alcohol and aldehyde organic pollutants are categorized by world health organization as very volatile organic compounds they exist in gaseous phase and their boiling point ranges from Uh, below 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius compounds like methylene chloride propane etc belong to this group volatile organic compounds uh, is the second group and their boiling point ranges from 50 degree celsius to 260 degree celsius it includes benzene formaldehyde etc they exist in gaseous phase in third group belongs semi volatile organic compounds they exist in gaseous as well as in particulate phase their boiling point ranges from 240 degree celsius to 400 degree celsius and pesticides a uh, polychlorinated biphenyls a uh, polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons are found in this group the last group includes organic compounds associated with particulates having boiling point above 80 degree celsius so here also we uh, phs or dioxin and furans are associated in particulate phase you see sometimes also referred as reactive organics or hydrocarbons or non methane hydrocarbons the definition given by uscpa is that the vocs are organic compounds having a vapor pressure greater than 10 pascal at 25 degree celsius a boiling point less than or equal to 260 degree celsius measured at a standard atmospheric pressure of 101 kilopascal and it may contain a uh, 15 or less number of carbon atoms so large number of compounds are included in this group they are classified as oxygenated compounds like alcohols ketones aldehydes ethers organic acids esters ketones carbonyls and phenols etc second is the nitrogen containing compounds that include 
amines, amides, nitro aromatic hydrocarbons, and nitrosamines. Halogenated VOCs like carbon tetrachloride, alkanes like hexane, pentane, etc., alkanes like 2 buty, and aromatic hydrocarbons like benzene are included in this group. VOCs are emitted in the atmosphere by natural as well as anthropogenic sources. Natural sources of VOC include emissions from fossil fuel deposits, volcanoes, oceans, bacteria, microbes, wild animals, degradation of organic matter, and vegetation. So vegetation produces uh, compounds like isoprene, pinene, monoterpene, etc. The emission of biogenic VOCs consisting of isoprene and monoterpenes accounts for almost 90% of total global emission. VOCs are released from anthropogenic sources due to fossil fuel combustion. They are emitted by power plants, industrial, commercial, and institutional sources, residential heaters and boilers, petrochemical industries, dry cleaners and service stations, crude oil production, and wood processing in sawmills. VOCs are also released from emissions from vehicular exhaust. Exhaust from non-road vehicles and engines such as boats, ships, aircraft, snowmobiles emit VOCs in the air. VOCs are also released from activities such as farm and construction equipment, lawn movers, chainsaws, etc. Uh, fugitive emissions that occur during fuel filling at station from exhaust and evaporative VOC components during fuel adulteration from landfill waste and from food manufacturing processes. Other activities that releases VOCs into the atmosphere are pharmaceuticals, domestic waste, tobacco smoke, biomass and open burning, cow dung burning, incense burning, then painting, cooking, cutting grass, and emissions from refrigerant. After the release of VOCs into the atmosphere, their removal from the atmosphere takes place through various processes. VOCs and NOMs, they act as the precursor in the formation of photochemical oxidants. They react in the presence of sunlight to form tropospheric ozone through a complex set of reactions. Also, they undergo oxidation reaction with hydroxyl radical, ozone, nitrate radical to form photochemical products such as peroxyacetyl nitrate. Some products formed may further be oxidized to form CO2 and water. They undergo nucleation reaction to form secondary organic aerosol. Photochemical products of VOCs may get deposited on existing aerosol by the process of advection. They get transported to remote region and participate in remote region chemistry, resulting in biological uptake of VOCs and secondary products. They are also removed by wet and dry deposition, washed out by rain, and by the process of convection, they participate in upper tropospheric chemistry, resulting in the depletion of ozone. We get exposed every day to atmospheric VOCs existing around us. It can be for short duration or it may be long term exposure. Short term exposure to VOCs may result in sensory irritation, unpleasant odors, nausea and headaches, increased irritation of the respiratory tract, then chronic cough, chest tightness, decreased pulmonary function. Trace, dizziness, absenteeism, 
loss of productivity, allergy, wheezing, and unspecific hypersensitivity. Narcotic effects can also be seen. And long term exposure to VOCs may cause lung cancer, leukemia, neurotoxic, hepatoxic, and genotoxic effects can be observed uh, if the person gets exposed uh, to VOCs for a long duration. Benzene 1,3-butadiene and formaldehyde account for 68% of the risk, cancer risk. Whereas in comparison, particulate matter accounts for only 28% as stated by USEPA. Benzene is associated with the development of leukemic cancer in human. It is included in group 1 that is confirmed human carcinogen by International Agency for Research on Cancer. It is also included in group A that is the known human carcinogen by USCPA. Airborne benzene is primarily absorbed to the respiratory tract and then transported by blood to critical target organ like uh, blood system, nervous system, liver, kidneys and mucous membrane. Details on specific health effects of each specific VOC can be found in the Agency for Toxic Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry Toxic Substances Portal. Before starting uh, the handling of any VOC, one should uh, uh, check this portal for the toxicity of the the VOCs are responsible for photochemical smoke formation, for enhancing the global greenhouse effect, responsible for stratospheric ozone depletion, shows toxic or carcinogenic human health effects. Also, they influence local, regional, and global photochemistry. They accumulate and remain persistent in the atmosphere. Therefore, it is necessary to study their sources, things, or distribution in the atmosphere, their chemical transformation and their residence time in the atmosphere are the subject of research. For quantitative measurement of VOC, we need a suitable sampling and analytical technique. As compounds having different functional groups belongs to this group. Sampling of VOCs is usually done by using active sampling, graph sampling, and passive sampling technique. Active sampling consists of a pumping a known volume of air through an absorbent bait. The chemicals in the air are trapped or concentrated on the adsorbent media. Active sampling is used as the reference method to compare the results of other sampling techniques. There are various samplers that can be used in active sampling mode, a Perkin-Ilmer sampler, then Gestel tube and charcoal tube are generally used in active sampling mode. Schematically, active sampling is shown here. Uh, air is forced to pass through the adsorbent bay where the absorption of VOC takes place. Pump is provided with flow regulation and measurement devices. Thus, we get known volume of air passed through the system. Perkin-Ilmer sampler. This is the Perkin-Ilmer sampler. Uh, it is a long stainless steel tube packed with suitable adsorbent. The adsorbent is retained in place by means of stainless steel gauges at both the ends. This is the gestel. This is the gestel sampler. 
sphere dimensions of the gestures sampler are shown this tube is used only for active sampling this is a charcoal tube and can be used for active sampling it is fitted with a charcoal provided with two layers separated by foam separated by foam the second layer is provided to avoid the breakthrough of the pollutants the advantages of using these methods are that they are less expensive method but uh, they may be subject to breakthrough problem and they may require special handling to prevent sample deterioration during transport to lab for analysis so while selecting the methods you have to consider here we are going to see uh, uh, what are the diffusive sampler a diffusive sampler is a device which is capable of taking samples of gas or vapor pollutants from the atmosphere at a rate controlled by a physical process such as diffusion through a static air layer or permeation through a membrane but it does not involve the active movement of air through the sampler the analytes are adsorbed at a rate controlled by molecular diffusion diffusive sampling rates are mainly governed by a physical process of diffusion and physical dimensions of the sampling device here uh, this is a perkin ilmer tube perkin ilmer tube uh, we can use this tube in a diffusive mode analyte molecules diffuse through the sampling end sampling end which is equipped with a diffusion cap this is the diffusion cap containing a gauze disc for a diffusion distance that is typically 15 mm before they are trapped in the adsorbent these samplers are reusable after desorption so here uh, you have to replace a uh, storage cap with this diffuse diffusion cap after the sampling the diffusion cap is to be replaced with storage cap this is a this is a radiolo sampler driven by the concentration gradient the gaseous molecules pass through the diffusive surface and are trapped on the adsorbing surface this is a batch type of sampler uh, here air is sampled through a diffusion matrix diffusion matrix and gets adsorbed on the material which is placed in the housing body during the sampling the cover this cover is to be fixed with over this housing body and here solvent is required for the extraction of there are several advantages of using passive sampling method it is a simple reliable cost effective technique it can be used to monitor for a longer duration it does not require supervision it is noiseless it is non flammable here no pump is required while sampling they are easy to deploy and retrieve no use of solvent or very little use of solvent is required they can be used to measure time weighted average concentration but while using this uh, sampling higher humidity can produce errors in the result possible bad diffusion of pollutants may occur possible interferences between compounds may occur and for quantification purpose uh, we need we require sampling or uptake rate for each compound
here it is a graph sampling and it is done for a short duration of time for the purpose of sampling grass tubes filled with hard sorbents stainless steel container gas sampling bulbs made of glass gas sampling bags uh, such as teddler teflon aluminum teddler bags are used to collect samples uh, this technique uh, is simple to use it is a very least expensive technique temporal variability can be measured uh, they can be transported to remote places for monitoring purpose this technique is suitable for large survey minimal manpower is required and uh, we get instantaneous concentration of the pollutants uh but it may involve extractive sampling then some samplers are permeable to certain chemicals uh they may lose significant amount of sample when stored for prolonged period and they show a memory effect if improper cleaning is not done after the use here some uh, here this is the tedler bag this is glass gas sampling one pump you have to use pump for the collection of so this is the stainless steel canister of uh, so canister sampling involves the collection of the whole air matrix in a pre cleaned evaporated cylinder this technique is specially useful for the most volatile species each canister is passed through passivation process uh, it is the process done to improve the corrosion resistance of stainless steel parts prior to their use the canisters must be carefully cleaned and evacuated in order to avoid contamination uh, these uh, samplers can be used in two modes you can uh, perform graph sampling or time integrated sampling so uh, time integrated sampling is the collection of mix of graph samples from different points with this method uh, multiple aliquots are possible for analysis they show good sample integrity and it is considered as a robust method but comparatively it is more expensive method than other sampling method and require special handling to prevent sample deterioration during transport to lab for analysis so solid phase micro extraction technique includes sampling pre concentration and direct transfer of the analyte into a gas chromatograph so here you need not to perform solvent desorption and thermal desorption techniques to make them compatible with the analytical technique spme device includes spme holder and the spme fiber assembly the fiber assembly includes the extracting polymer coated on a fused silica fiber that is housed in a needle the spme holder is used to guide the polymer into and out of the needle so this method is accurate fast sensitive versatile and cost efficient and it can be used in grab and time weighted average mode use of spme is limited for polar voc and uh, available stationary phases are limited for some voc so calorimetric tubes are portable and disposable devices pump draws and air volume within the wire the sample reagent reacts with the substance causing a color change and is proportional to the concentration of the substance to be measured it is not expensive and it is easy to use they provide rapid response specific gas detection can be done with this 
calorimetric tube uh, works at higher concentration levels on site monitoring is possible with this technique but some drawbacks of the method are that the measurement accuracy is very low deterioration of the reagent may occur during the sampling they cannot be used for continuous monitoring optical remote or long pass monitoring involves very sophisticated analyzers they use absorption and diffusion properties of gases in the atmosphere in visible ultraviolet and infrared light regions the optical path of a light beam of a certain wavelength can be changed by contact with gases and or dust so there are several analyzers are available for the monitoring of voc differential absorption infrared laser here pulsing light is diffused and absorbed by gases in the atmosphere second one is the differential optical absorption spectrometry it involves a continuous light beam in the uv and visible region which is absorbed by pollutants the receiver is at the end of the optical path directs the beam into an optical fiber and through this to the analyzer uh, then to real transform infrared here absorption in the infrared between a source and a receiver allows the quantitative analysis of vocs then back scatter absorption gas imaging here an infrared laser illuminate the potential source of emission permitting quantification of gas concentration by means of the lambert beer's law so optical remote monitoring techniques provide direct real time continuous measurement of pollution by analyzing representative samples of air they show high specificity specificity due to broad band spectra uh, also have high sensitivity due to long path lengths it is possible uh, to measure vocs simultaneously and uh, this is uh, the best feature that we can use uh, to study the atmospheric behavior of voc so while monitoring atmospheric turbulence induce intensity variations in the spectra then few molecules have a suitable absorption in uv and visible range so it restricts the use of uh, the analyzer to some voc then rain snow fog and clouds make measurements impossible due to strong attenuation in the uv visible region uh, they require better visibility and meteorological homogeneity so uh, by uh, using these analyzers uh, it is that uh, analyzers are very costly they require trained person frequent calibration is required to maintain the data quality of uh, use of the analyzers require dedicated person so direct measuring devices include portable voc analyzers they are portable due to their size and weight and able to provide real time analysis of gas concentration on site monitoring of environmental pollutants is possible so there are several analyzers available with different detectors or uh, which can be used for different type of vocs uh, one is the photo ionization detector these detectors are equipped with a lamp emitting ultraviolet light the emitted light ionizes targeted vocs in the air sample 
so they can be detected and reported as concentration second one is the flame ionization detector it is a universal detector as it gives response to almost all the hydrocarbons here sample air is channeled through a chamber where a flame ionizes it measuring the concentration as a function of electric potential uh, electron capture detectors are used to detect halogenated compounds in ambient air and nitrogen phosphorus detector are optimized to respond to compounds containing nitrogen and phosphorus so gas chromatography mass spectrometer here it is a device collect an air sample to a heated probe on a suitable adsorbent after sample desorption the separation is carried out on a chromatographic collar and the individual components are analyzed by mass spectrometry our ms is the first choice of an analytical chemist as a confirmatory technique to identify unknown compounds it is used in pr that is electron impact or chemical ionization mode so ei is currently the most commonly used technique for ionizing compounds that elute from dc column into the ionization chamber of a mass spectrometer secondly pi is especially useful technique when no molecular ion is observed in ei mass spectrum so advantages of mass spectrometer are that they generate a mass spectrum for each individual compound and it is unique for each compound and served as a type of fingerprint of each compound or uh, they can discriminate between compounds that coelute during analysis it is the positive feature of the ms but ms cannot differentiate between the isomers one of the technique is that proton transfer reaction mass spectrometer it is used to measure a broad range of volatile organic compounds including alkenes aromatics and relatively unoxidized organics with sub ppt detection limit vocs in the sample gas are ionized by proton transfer reactions with the hydronium ion which are produced in an ion source and are detected by ms so these uh, all these techniques are very costly uh, they require trained person then calibration of all those instruments is very very important and all the analyzer should be kept under controlled condition for the measurement of voc selection of a proper adsorbent is necessary before the selection of adsorbent following aspects should be considered so uh, we should check with breakthrough volume it is the calculated volume of carrier gas per gram of adsorbent resin which causes the analyte molecule to migrate from the front end to the back of the adsorbent bead then you have to check uh, stability of target analyte on the sorbent during sampling and storage then adsorbent should be thermally stable during analysis so that they do not decompose when heated to remove trapped organics if it happens the decomposed material will interfere in the analysis background signal due to sorbent should be minimal otherwise they may also interfere during the analysis affinity of sorbent for water should be minimum otherwise active surfaces will not be available for the absorption of the uh, voc then 
efficiency of desorption of collected compounds should be proper here from uh, commercially available adsorbent are listed adsorbent used for voc collection their type composition and their temperature limit is shown so here or uh, you can see that carbon molecular key then activated charcoal graphitized carbon black silica octadecyl silica chlorophyll pinacea chromosome are used for different voc's and they are categorized further as a uh, like uh, here one is the inorganic carbon based second is categorized as inorganic silica and alumina based and third one is the organic polymer so more adsorbents are shown here like chromosome porota pdms dv dvd so they are also used in various uh, uh for the analysis of so uh, voc's are strongly bound to the sorbent during the sampling therefore it is necessary to make them compatible with analytical instruments enrichment of the sample is of vital importance because samples are sometimes too dilute or too complex and need to undergo a chain of specific treatments to make them compatible with analytical technique the strength of the interaction between adsorbent and adsorbate determines the required desorption step so there are generally two methods are available for the desorption of adsorbed voc solvent desorption system here we use solvents they can destroy strong adsorbent analyze interaction while selecting uh, we should check that solvent should have good extraction efficiency for the adsorbed species uh, several solvents are used like diethyl ether dichloromethane ethanol and carbon disulfide uh, we use the solvents depending on the functional groups of voc the commonly used solvent for vocs is carbon disulfide this solvent provides a good recovery of volatile hydrocarbons from activated charcoal but it is very toxic itself and can easily be contaminated due to its ability to absorb some organic compounds like benzene vapors from air so there are advantages uh, while we use solvent desorption system uh, that aliquot of the extract is used for analysis here duplicates are possible that means we can do multiple analyses concentration of analyte can be optimized if the concentration is less we can reduce the volume of the sample and if it is highly concentrated then we can dilute it some compounds require derivation before analysis so it permits analyte derivation but a small fraction of the extract is used while analysis so therefore rest of the sample cannot be used thereby decreasing the detection limit of the second method is the thermal desorption method capillary gc compatible thermal desorption technology is available commercially since 1981 here analyte adsorbed by solid sorbent are released by thermal action to a gc column during the analysis material supply 
applied in atomic thermal desorption are mainly carbon based materials such as activated carbon they can be carbon molecular sieve or porous organic polymers sensitivity using uh, thermal desorption method is typically very high here no solvent is required then limited to gc analysis and thermal stable compounds uh, it can be used for routine measurement then here wide range of compounds can be analyzed at one time because in solvent desorption system when we select solvent uh, we select it according to the uh, uh, according to uh, like dissolves like uh, technique but here we are putting all the material all together uh, in the column so we can get a wide range of compounds it is not suitable for analyze requiring derotization or the compounds that are thermally stable this is the schematic set of thermal desorption system it includes uh, thermal desorb desorber cryo trap and gc column and detector so in the thermal desorber the analyte are thermally released and are transported to cryo trap cryogenic cold trapping is used for narrowing the band and improving the detection limit nitrogen gas or peltier cooling is generally used to decrease the temperature temperature programming is done to release the condensed voc which enters into the column and can further be detected in summary uh, voc exists in ppb or ppt levels and hence sample free concentration and use of sensitive detection methods are necessary several standard sampling and analytical methods are available to analyze various voc's each method has its own application range and limitations therefore it is necessary to select suitable methods according to the properties of voc such that vapor pressure boiling point polarity of a target compound here are some standard methods for vocs available from international standard organization european standards and from us epa to determine vocs in ambient air are listed methods mainly deal with active and passive sampling and thermal and solvent desorption techniques so one can select the proper method we use the standard methods to determine the levels of toxic voc these levels are to be compared with air quality standards so the reason for developing pollution standards is to ensure that the air quality provides the healthy environment by controlling the concentration of pollutants standards for outdoor air quality exist and are relied on to protect the general population guideline value given by european committee is 300 mg per cubic meter for total volatile organic compounds in india national ambient air quality standards for benzene given by cpcb is 5 mg per cubic here national ambient air quality standards uh, for benzene is shown uh, it is a time weighted average uh, annually it should be 5 mg per cubic meter so twa is the average rate at which worker is exposed to a contaminant and this benzene uh, standard is applicable to industrial residential rural and other areas 
it is also applicable to ecologically sensitive areas this table also play, uh, shows that the methods of measurement for uh, benzene like uh, <clears throat> gas chromatography based on continuous analyzer or adsorption and desorption followed by dc analysis with the discussed sampling and analytical techniques one can check the levels of benzene and compare with standards whether the levels are exceeding the standards what control measures are to be taken to minimize the concentration uh, with this i conclude my presentation thank you